Good to be YouTube Hardball Crazy Come Back with video. I thought I'd um, make this kind of a special video, I guess. Tell a story about uh, a, a card being Mother's Day, about uh, Mother's Day, and a special card that was uh, uh, gifted to me by my mom. And um, kind of story how my mom played and, uh, uh, into my collection and all that type of stuff. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, the most hyped, most talked about player in baseball right now, Paul Skeens. First pick in last year's draft uh, from the LSU um, that, uh, College World Series championship team. Uh, Pittsburgh Pirates picked him first overall, and uh, he's making his major league debut on Saturday. I did watch a couple of the College World Series games last year um, between LSU and Florida. And because not only Paul Schemes is on LSU's team, also Dylan Cruz, who is the um, Washington Nationals top uh, pick. Is that, he was number, I think he was number two overall. And I think he's the top prospect, not top prospect. Top two and Cruz was talked about being perhaps the greatest player in LSU history. He had accolades and all that type of stuff. And so I watched Paul, and he was always, he was considered the, um, uh, the first overall pick, most likely, until Skeens kind of pitched his way in with the College World Series. So I watched Skeens pitch last year against Florida, which had Wyatt Langford on the team, and also has a player you probably not know of. He's going to project to be a first-round pick. Uh, this coming draft, Jack Caglione, I think I pronounced his name right. He's like a two-way player, but first-base pitcher. He's got um, good pop and... Um, as he's a pitching prospect too. I think he's he's a still a two way pitcher. I think he's probably going to win the John O'Rourke Award in college. I'm not sure, but anyways, I watched Skeens pitch in um in college last year, the World Series, and he's uh, talked about him being the best college pitcher since Strasburg, and it kind of coincides with how he's probably the most hyped debut since Strasburg, pitching wise. Um, he uh he's big dude. He's much bigger size-wise than the Strasburg. Skeens is built like a lineman or a power forward in basketball. A 6'6", 230, 240. He's got easy gas. I mean, he just throws it up there and goes high 90s. And he's got a great secondary pitch. He offsets, and he's good. I think he's going to be have a good career. Um, I'm not sure about arm troubles. I think he's pitched so effortlessly, so I don't think he's going to have a lot of arm problems, but who knows? His pitchers and with the backs out these days, we don't can't predict it. Um, a little couple of facts you probably did not know about Skeens is that he actually started his college career with the Air Force Academy, and he was a two-way player. And then beginning of last year's baseball season, it was his only year at LSU. He transferred, and LSU um, uh, made him into a... Um, full-time pitcher and kind of um, used his pitching um, abilities and kind of maxed out and used their uh, to make Skeens the number one overall pick. But I'm anticipating I'll be watching it tomorrow, watching his debut. And this is my Paul Skeens first Bowman card I picked up over the winter. I think I got it on Com C, perhaps. I'm not sure. I haven't bought Com C much lately. I used to buy a lot on Com C, but... Um, Used to get cars cheaper now, but everybody's on Comp C more, and they have a little more longer shipping delays. So, I haven't bought a lot in the last year or so, but I used to buy a whole crap ton on Comp C. Comp C has been very, very good hardball crazy. Anyways, back to the uh, feature discussion. Talk about my mom and and the hobby. Uh, my mom was uh, always been a sports fan, so she kind of supported my collecting hobby and stuff. She tells a story. Um, I was born on New Year's Day, and uh, like 11:30 at night or something like that. And um, she tells the story that uh, in the hospital room, waiting to give birth to myself, to me, that she was watching the Rose Bowl. And once the Rose Bowl ended, she said, "It's a story she's told me and others. Oh, Rose Bowl games over with. Time to have Derek." So she went to labor, and here I went. Here I am, 52 years later. So she tells the story now, so even back then, before I was born, she was a bit of a sports fan. And um, she, um, I only have one other sibling. That's a brother. He's two years. Uh, Grade-wise, almost three years because I'm January. He's November. Uh, 
almost three years actual birth yeah, t difference, but we had two great difference in um, growing up in school. Uh, so we were uh, just the two of us, and my mom, uh, my dad, and my mom got divorced. When I was like 10, 11 years old, and I lived. My brother and I lived with my mom most of the time, 75% of the time. So growing up, we lived out in the country. Didn't have cable. We lived too far away from Detroit, to, uh, to um, two hours away from Detroit, to have any Detroit local uh, broadcast. So it was always the the Lansing area stuff. So I watched whatever sports was on TV. So it was either baseball. Football, basketball, wherever the season, the Olympics, tennis, golf. Uh, that was thing that, that, that was the main ones. We didn't watch much. I remember watching a few like Daytona 500s, Indy 500s, but racing was never any of our things. So didn't watch much hockey because hockey wasn't available where I was watching. So I didn't really know much about hockey until I got to college. My um, first roommate, uh, his dad played at college hockey or something, and I started going to Michigan State hockey games. And, and, um, I started learning about hockey. I couldn't tell you what hat trick was growing up or anything like that. So I knew who Gretzky was. I knew Steve Eisman, a couple of Red Wings like Bob Prober and Peter Klima. I knew a couple of Michigan State guys because they were on the 6 o'clock local news. But uh, hockey-wise, I didn't know, so it's never been a huge part of my life. I well, like it and everything, but just it's never been must-see TV for me. I enjoyed watching a lot of the Red Wings teams in the 90s and 2000s, Russian Five and the championship, Stanley Cup championships. I like West Coast State hockey, but when the Stanley Cup playoffs are on, like, nah. Is that the Red Wings? I don't really care. That's because it's not part of my always been viewership. Anyways, I digress. Anyway, so we always watched sports growing up. So my mom always um, uh, bought us some baseball. My brother and I, baseball cards and football cards, mostly the two. Uh, we didn't buy much basketball. We went until like '89 when hoops came out. I don't remember ever seeing Fleers in um, in stores. I remember buying some '81, '80 tops uh, football and basketball early. Uh, not much, but uh, we always bought baseball, football, and we she took us she took us to the car shops and car shows. And sometimes a, somebody was signing, we make sure you take that uh, go to that car shop, the car show, who was signing autographs or something like that. So she's she part of the hobby. But uh, the main story I was to tell you was uh, my freshman year at Michigan State was uh, fall of 1990. Uh, I graduated, that was my freshman year. And back in 1990, I lived in the dorms and stuff. And um, I remember one year, uh, I remember the, my freshman year, uh, my mom called me in the dorms in the fall. And uh, I remember watching the Simpsons Halloween special. She called me and she says, uh, I got bad news. I was like, oh, what, what happened? Our house has been broken into. They sold everything. I said, like, what? Everything? Yeah, they took everything, even the toaster we had. They took everything. And I said, of course, did they take any of my baseball cars? He's like, no, I don't think so. And um, this is the second time our house has been broken into since I was, since then. So since then, we've got an alarm system and feel a lot safer. Anyways, uh, so the next time I went for a weekend home, I went to... Uh, get to do laundry, get some home cooking, visit the mom and my stepdad at the time, and um, rest in peace, Doug. Uh, so uh, we went home for cooking and some laundry and stuff, so naturally was the first things I do when I get home is I, I go to my bedroom, see if they stole anything. Yep, lo and behold, they stole my my closet. was like a long closet. It wasn't deep, so all my clothes were like here, and I had boxes and stuff here and I had a little bit of shelves to the right side so it was basically a, du a double door and a double door closet but it was not deep it was wide so I had some sh um, built some shelves on the side that was kind of hidden between the stuff that clothes on the hangers and they didn't see that so I think when people made, stole a bunch of stuff they just grabbed what they could and said oh this baseball cards they're worth probably a whole bunch of money and so they took about three or four 3,200 count boxes I had on the floor. So you open the door and had that on the floor, but they didn't take anything to the side. So my sides were a little more valuable stuff. I remember having 89 upper decks at the time. So I mentioned my mom, yeah, they took some of the stuff, um, unfortunately. Mostly it was like working building sets type stuff. And it's like, well, do they take anything that's worth anything? So, well, the biggest card I'm going to miss is my Cecil Fielder rookie card. Of course, this is the ninth fall of 1990, and he was probably the hot, one of the hottest names in the. Um, 
in the hobby because he just hit us hit 51 home runs that year, the first one to do it since George Foster in 77. So his cards are worth quite a bit and part of the – he's a hobby darling. So he, he's one of my favorite Tigers now. And um, so, um, yeah, I took my Cecil Field a rookie and I kind of went – like I was bummed as oh, okay, and then we just kind of moved on. Different kind of conversation. Never thought about anything about later. I think about fast forward about almost uh, a year later or something. Um, my mom and my stepdad would take once or twice a year take trips to Florida. My stepdad's mom lived down there, and they would visit. i go down there and visit, and and so a year later, or so like after uh, school started for my brother and I. And um, they took a trip down to uh, Florida. Uh, they came back, and I think I went to, I went to visit them a uh, weekend or so later after the return. I go home, and uh, cas- casually getting home, waiting for our brother. I think we always go out to eat on Friday night, so we were wait, kind of waiting around. Before we got to eat, my mom says, I got something for you. I said, what's that? I was down in Florida. I bought this card for you. It's also a field rookie card. I, I was like, whoa. Thanks, Mom. And I didn't even think about it. You know, I kind of just blew it off. I asked myself if the rookie card is gone. So I didn't think she knew what, exactly what card it was or um, anything about it. So this is how one of my um, cherished memories of my card collecting, how a sad, uh, um, a sad moment turned a happy ending, I guess. The Howard, this card always remember, reminds me of my mom. And um, and this card will always cherish my collection. And she bought it. And I think, if I remember correctly, the day she gave it to me was actually coincidentally, just not coincidence, was Cecil Fields' birthday. And that night, um, he ended up hitting a home run. So this whole kind of perfect storm of coincidence that happened. And always the Cecil Fielder rise by mom. Happy Mother's Day to my mom and all the other moms out there. Thank you for supporting um, us boys, men, uh, husbands, and so forth in the um, hobby. and Collecting little cardboard cards of a bunch of dudes we should be outgrown of. We think we'd be outgrown of, but we support us. And um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And uh, I just want to tell you my Mother's Day... um, mom's story i guess and i talked long enough it's almost 13 minutes long and the tiger game is about to start so i'll leave you with that and thank you for watching